Okay, now the sound should be also there on the live stream. Um, so um, we we have to pass some uh, parameters options to the uh, plugin code. This is done via the various uh, configuration. Um, then the various core code calls function inside uh, calls Python code on defined events, um, and the, the backup process can modify various variables. And uh, in the um, component, also in the in the file daemon configuration the plugin usage must be explicitly enabled, like shown here. This is an example of what can be done with the director plugin. It's, it's useful for, for monitoring purposes, as there is an existing plugin, which is also on GitHub, which can be used to send performance data to Nagios or Isinga. And this is an example of how it's uh, configured. These are variables that are that can be read from the director. So now for the FD plugins, um, the package to be installed is called Barrios File Demon Python plugin, and um, um, like shown here, it uh, must be enabled. These lines are in the default configuration that comes with the package. They are commented out. Um, yeah, then we have to restart the Barrios file daemon. Um, the uh, statement plugin names can be omitted, but as there can be also other plugins, like for example the BPI plugin that was mentioned before. Um, then it will load all. Um, Plugins found in the in the directory user lib 64 various plugins. So with plugin names like Python, it will only load the Python at the .so library. As we um, in the configuration, uh, it is determined which plug which Python plugin <coughs> gets used in the end. So multiple plugins are possible, um, and uh, this is defined in the file set resource. So here we define um, which Python codes gets used in the end, and we and can add uh, custom parameters that are passed to uh, the Python code. The Two plugin types um, of um, file daemon plugins, um, command plugins and option plugins will be explained a bit later. So this is a, a complete uh, example of how to configure the use of a Python plugin. As I said, it's defined in the in the file set, where you normally say file equals slash or something. There we uh, define instead uh, this plugin line, which um, then determines which which plugin will be run. And this is a job example which will use this file set. In this example, it's uh, it's uh, a simple demo plugin, which is called. Um, Barrios FD local file set. It just processes a list of files and back up backs up uh, those files. It's a, that's a good example for, for learning how the Python plugin in Barrios works. And this would be an example output of um, the result of such a job. This is uh, an example of how to run a restore. So 
the file set must be selected and then we also have a list of files that we can mark for restore and um, and it restores the files so but now I want to explain a bit more how the how the plugins work so as we've seen there is um, a library this is written in C the python fd.so when we use a python plugin um, it instantiates a new python interpreter it extends the search path for python code um, with the path that we give here with module path and it imports the the module that we've given by module name that determines which plugin is run in the end then yeah the and this is the entry point which must be available the callback functions which are it, it works like that the the c part uh, calls uh, python functions we also also call them hook functions there are also a lot of constants defined which must be used within the python code we'll see an example a bit later um, then the next step is that it calls the load varios plugin in the python plugin code and then it calls pass plugin definition which then um, passes the pl the plugin string which we pass in with our custom parameters um, yeah then the backup starts and the there's the difference between command and option plugins is that is a different processing loop that we come to in the next slides <coughs> this is an example for a command plugin configuration the uh, plugin string is defined in the include section of the file set and compared to that uh, option plugin definition the plugin string is defined in the options section of the file set and yeah that we come to the difference a bit later that's makes not much sense here this the major difference is between the command and option plugins that the po command plugin determines what is being backed up itself so it also must handle differential and incremental while an option plugin gets the list of files to be backed up from the director so it in that case you must define the file equals in the um, file set um, which is then sent to the plugin so the most what happens then there are some um, now to some more um, callback hook functions that are called within the python code when a backup runs for each file it's it uh, invokes the start backup file function in python the the context parameter is always passed and this context must also be passed back when we call um, functions in the barrios core and the save packet is, is a data structure which um, which must be filled with some uh, data for each file that's being backed up and one of the the, the most important function is the plugin io function which handles all the IO operation. If it's a simple file backup, it must, in the case of a uh, backup, it must open the file that, that's being backed up. Then the plugin IO gets called repeatedly um, until the file is backed up, and in the end, it must close the file. 
and when the file backup is done, it, the end backup file is called. And there it's also um, determined if more files are going to be backed up or not by um, the return code of the end backup file function. And with command plugins, the handle backup file function is not called. That's only called in the option plugin. I think I will skip over this. It's mostly the same. So um, these are functions that uh, do things call that call uh, code in the Barrios core code, which is written in C. So the most important ones are the job message function, which um, can generate uh, information, error, or warning messages that are passed back to the director so that those then appear also in the um, in the job log. And uh, then there are debug messages which are important when, when developing uh, a Python plugin um, because uh, that's the only way to show um, debug messages. But those do not appear in the job logs. They only appear when we uh, run the file daemon in debug mode um, in the foreground. And we have the get value, which is used to, to get values that are set from the director to read them into the Python code. Um, while uh, Python, the code can be monolithic, it makes more sen sense to use inheritance to reuse existing code. And uh, the Barrios file daemon Python plugin package provides a base class that defines all the functions that are possible and uh, which is useful to inherit from. And we have the Barrios FDF wrapper pi, which is a wrapper code defining all the functions that are called from uh, in the plugin. Um, yeah, here we have an example of uh, how to run the Barrios FD in the foreground so that we see the debug messages at uh, level 100 or lower. How much time do I have? Okay. And I must <laughs> it's it's a lot of stuff, so <laughs> sorry. Return codes from constants. Yeah, so to, to get started with it, it's it's a good idea to s to uh, to look at one of the existing plugins and uh, read the code and to understand how it how it works. The base class defines, as I already said, um, the most important stuff. Yeah, for the restore case, for example, if we want to restore files, we must also take care to, um, to create the intermediate directories, like this example shows. And yeah, one of the uh, most important functions is the plugin IO functions, um, which is called with uh, different uh, IO operation types. In the um, uh, at the beginning, it's called uh, with either IO open. Uh, in the beginning, with IO open, but there are also IO flags which. Uh, can be used to determine if it's a uh, backup or restore that we are currently running. It can also be um, used um, in that place because it's uh, we not only can backup uh, files uh, with the plugin, but uh, 
um, we can call other functions or um, other tools to, uh, for example, dump a database and get a data stream back. It must not necessarily be a file. And then the um, it's called with IO read or IO write. IO read in the backup case, IO write in the restore case repeatedly. Um, and uh, in each of the call, um, the plugin code must fill a buffer variable until the end of data is reached. And here I have uh, um, mentioned some examples uh, that, that are a good point to, to study if you want to start using Python plugins. Um, another existing plugin is what is written in Python is a MySQL plugin, which um, uh, works like, um, well, the common way of backing up a uh, database is to uh, run a prescript which runs a MySQL dump or PostgreSQL dump to the local file system and then uh, use a normal backup to backup the dump file. But if it's a larger database, we probably don't want to have the dump file on the local file system, but rather send the data stream directly to the backup server. And this plugin um, has the advantage that, is that it automatically um, determines the list of databases in the database server and uh, backs up each database separately. It has some options that I won't explain in detail here. And um, there is also another now very interesting plugin now that is written in Python, which makes use of Bacona Extra Backup, which uh, enables um, incremental backups of MySQL databases and also point in time recovery. So if you want to get started with uh, development of uh, Python plugins, it's a good idea to set up a VM for development. Uh, in, uh, we have instructions of uh, how to set up barrios in the documentation. There are also, um, um, in SUSE Studio, we created an, a pre-configured appliance. Um, I like Vagrant and KVM, so I have created a small Vagrant file, which you can find here to, to easily get a uh, installation up and running. And um, here's how you would do it manually. I don't think we need to look at that in detail. There's also an example of how to run a backup. And in the end, if we have some minutes left. OK. So. Um, we already also have a VMware plugin, which is written in Python, that was mentioned in another talk already. We will start soon working on a plugin which makes use of the backup restore API in Overt. Yeah, we have uh, had a very excellent talk uh, <coughs> about uh, incremental backups in QEMU. So this is also um, something that's very that could be interesting for implementing it in using a Python plugin. Um, yeah, some other ideas are mentioned here. We um, yeah, for example, uh, other SQL databases or no SQL databases like MongoDB. I mean, if they are very large, I know there is Mongo Dump which may be suitable for smaller MongoDB databases, but for the large ones, obviously not. Um, yeah, what, what is there in Docker to back up? I don't know. Maybe you have an idea. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, we have thinking, been thinking a long time about uh, KVM stuff, but I think the most promising, because everybody wants incremental backups, is the is the recently appearing new stuff in QEMO. So, 
Yeah, any questions, ideas, proposals? Yes? Is there a plugin for uh, Xen server? For backup VM? Uh, Xen server? Yes. Uh, no, there's no plugin recently, but uh, that uh, we we are also using Xen server, and uh, I think it's possible to get at least full backups uh, out of Xen server via HTTP. So um, that uh, I think we do this with the BPipe plugin. It's already possible with the BPipe plugin, but it could be also a good idea to implement that in Python because. Uh, Python could use the Xen uh, API to get a list of all the virtual machines to backup and uh, do the rest in an automated way, for example. Okay. Yeah. Other oh, time is up. Okay, I'm around here, so ask me later if you want. Thanks. Thanks.